Black Shuck, the ghostly black dog, the haunting of Suffolk. In the heart of East Anglia, nestled within the verdant landscapes of Suffolk, lies the quaint village of Blithburg. Known for its serene countryside, rolling green hills, and ancient woodlands, the village is a tapestry of Old England, where history whispers through every cobblestone and ivy-clad wall. But amid the picturesque charm and tranquil beauty, a dark legend lingers, a tale as old as the village itself, of a spectral hound known as Black Shuck. The story begins in the late summer of 1577, a year marked by strange omens and celestial disturbances. The sky over Suffolk had been painted with hues of crimson and violet, and the villagers spoke in hushed tones of the eerie occurrences. It was during this time that the Reverend Abraham Fleming, a scholarly and devout man, noted the peculiar atmosphere. He was the new rector of Blithburg Church, a grand, imposing structure dating back to the 15th century, with its towering spire and intricately carved stone gargoyles watching over the village. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting an amber glow across the fields, a storm began to brew. The air grew heavy with the scent of rain and the rumble of thunder echoed in the distance. Reverend Fleming, a man of routine and discipline, was preparing his sermon in the candlelit confines of the rectory. His mind, however, was troubled by the recent reports from his parishioners. Tales of a monstrous black dog with eyes like burning coals prowling the countryside. The legends of Black Shuck were not new to East Anglia. For centuries, tales of the ghostly black dog had been told and retold around hearths and in taverns. Some said he was a harbinger of death. Others believed he was a guardian spirit, protecting travelers from unseen dangers. Yet, all agreed on one thing. Encountering Black Shuck was an experience no one ever forgot. As the storm intensified, Reverend Fleming heard a knock at his door. It was Thomas, a young shepherd from the outskirts of the village. His face was pale, and his eyes wide with fear. Reverend, he stammered, it's Black Shuck. I've seen him, just now, by the old oak tree near the river. Intrigued and concerned, Reverend Fleming grabbed his cloak and followed Thomas into the night. The wind howled through the trees, and flashes of lightning illuminated the darkened sky. They reached the ancient oak, its gnarled branches swaying ominously. There, in the shadows, stood a massive black hound, its eyes glowing like embers in the darkness. The hound stared at them for what seemed like an eternity, and then, as if carried by the wind, a mournful howl pierced the air. The sound was otherworldly, filled with sorrow and foreboding. Reverend Fleming felt a chill run down his spine. This was no ordinary dog. This was Black Shuck, the Phantom of Suffolk. In the days that followed, the sightings of Black Shuck became more frequent. The villagers spoke of him appearing at crossroads, churchyards, and lonely stretches of the marshlands. Some claimed to have heard his howls in the dead of night, a sound that made their blood run cold. The once peaceful village was now shrouded in fear and uncertainty. Reverend Fleming, a man of faith and reason, decided to investigate the legend further. He delved into the village's archives, unearthing old manuscripts and folklore. He learned of a tragic tale from centuries past, involving a noble family and a curse that had befallen them. It was said that the patriarch of the family, in a fit of rage, had murdered a beloved black hound, a guardian spirit of the land. As retribution, the spirit returned as Black Shuck, doomed to wander the earth, seeking solace and justice. Determined to uncover the truth, Reverend Fleming began to piece together the fragments of the story. He visited the elderly, those who held the memories of the past, and listened to their accounts. He spoke with the wise women of the village, known for their knowledge of the old ways and the mysteries of the natural world. Slowly, a picture began to form. A picture of a village haunted not just by a spectral hound, but by its own history and the consequences of forgotten sins. As the autumn leaves turned to gold and the days grew shorter, the legend of Black Shuck took a darker turn. Strange events began to unfold in Blithburg. Livestock were found dead, their bodies untouched but their eyes wide with terror. Children spoke of seeing a black dog in their dreams, warning them of impending doom. The village, once a haven of peace, was now gripped by a palpable sense of dread. Reverend Fleming knew he had to act. 
He called a meeting in the church, gathering the villagers to discuss the growing menace. They needed to confront their fears and find a way to appease the restless spirit of Black Shuck. As the candles flickered in the ancient stone church, the villagers shared their stories and sought comfort in each other's company. They knew that to face Black Shuck, they had to unite as a community and confront the darkness that had haunted them for so long. As the villagers deliberated, an old woman named Agatha, known for her deep knowledge of local lore and the supernatural, stepped forward. Her eyes, though clouded with age, gleamed with wisdom. She recounted a tale passed down through generations of how the curse might be lifted. According to the legend, the spirit of Black Shuck could be put to rest by honoring the hound's original role as a guardian. The villagers must perform a ritual of reconciliation at the site where the hound had been wrongfully killed. With Reverend Fleming leading the way, the villagers gathered at the ancient oak tree near the river, the site of the hound's tragic demise. Under a full moon, they constructed a circle of stones and lit a sacred fire at its center. Agatha, holding a relic believed to be connected to the hound, a silver medallion once worn by the noble family's heir, began the incantation. As her voice rose in a melodic chant, the wind seemed to carry her words through the trees, and the very earth beneath their feet trembled. The villagers, hand in hand, joined in a solemn prayer for forgiveness and peace. The air grew thick with an unearthly presence, and suddenly, Black Shuck appeared at the edge of the circle. The spectral hound's eyes, once blazing with fury, now held a softer glow. He stepped into the circle, and as he did, the flames of the sacred fire burned brighter. Agatha approached him slowly, holding out the medallion. Guardian spirit, she intoned, we seek to mend the wrongs of the past and honor your place among us. Be at peace and watch over us as you once did. The hound paused, then bowed his great head. A moment later, he vanished into the night, the flames flickering and then extinguishing themselves. A sense of calm settled over the gathering, and the oppressive weight that had hung over the village lifted. From that night onward, the sightings of Black Shuck ceased. The villagers, now bonded by their shared experience, found a renewed sense of community and purpose. They restored the old oak tree surroundings, creating a memorial to honor the hound and the lessons learned from the past. Reverend Fleming recorded the events in his journal, noting that sometimes, the past must be faced and reconciled to find peace in the present. And though the legend of Black Shuck faded into the annals of local lore, the story of the ghostly black dog became a testament to the enduring power of forgiveness, unity, and the resilience of the human spirit. Thus, in the heart of Suffolk, the legend of Black Shuck transformed from a tale of terror into one of redemption, a story passed down through the ages, reminding all who heard it that even the darkest spirits can find peace.